It's often said music soothes the savage beast, but did you know it also soothes anxiety, helps manage stress, and alleviates pain? Scientific research has proven that music not only affects well-being, but brain function as well. You'll find music used from hospitals to psychiatric institutions. Music therapy is on the rise, and the results are impressive. Joining me now to discuss the latest applications and advances in music therapy are Alexandra Field, a board-certified music therapist at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, and Vijay Gupta, a violinist and member of the acclaimed Los Angeles Philharmonic. Welcome to Full Friend. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Fascinating subject. Alexandra, let's start with you. Sure. Talk to me about music therapy and how it's used at Children's Hospital. Yes, well, it's actually really amazing. Music therapy has come a long way over the last 50 years, and it's actually integrated so much into the treatment team that with the push of a button, just like you would order medication, you can order music therapy wow. to our patients. And we work with them bedside, we work with families, and we help alleviate pain anxiety and overall compliance with their treatment. Uh, VJ, I want to get to you in just a minute, but I want to kind of yes. piggyback off that because we have a clip here that demonstrates the impact about how it can help sick and premature infants. Let's take a look. Michael normally does respond to music. If his eyes are closed, sometimes he'll open them and sometimes he, his eyes will follow the sound. Uh, for Michael, music therapy really helps with his heart rate, and you can see on the monitor that his heart rate has dropped at least 20 points before since being here. It goes down almost every time, and he relaxes. We use the music a lot to help him before surgery. We sing songs that he's a fighter and different things like that. Boy, it's incredible stuff. I mean, you must just sit there in amazement at times. And you track. I guess some kids respond differently, right? I mean, you, it's, it's, each person, each patient is different. Music yes. can have a different impact, I suspect, as well. It can. We really personalize our treatment to the child. So it's not that one piece of music is more effective. It's what they maybe heard in the womb, mm -hmm. um, what their parents sang to them, what they heard in their environment. And our music therapists are trained to really um, tailor that to the moment. Because for a premature infant, it can be very overstimulating, but music is a really beautiful universal language, as we know, to really help them, you know, watch their respiratory rate, see if their heart rate's going down, improve their respiration, um, and also just help the family feel connected when sometimes they're not even able to hold their child. Mm -hmm. And so. Vijay, I want to talk to you because you kind of approach this from an interesting aspect in that you had this dual path as you were growing up, studying medicine mm -hmm. and studying music. And here's this intersection now, and you're, you must be listening to this, and I saw you nodding your head. I mean, it connects with you. It absolutely does, in a, in a very soul way, because right. in this beautiful way, music is um, a universal language, but that yes. one that goes deeper than language itself. Mm -hmm. For, you know, it becomes a communication that comes from one heart space, if you will, and enters that heart space of yeah. another being, or beings, if it's a large audience that's listening. But it is such a deeply profound human connection. For people who aren't familiar with Nick you can you, right. you take a step back, tell us what that is, and tell us about yes. this, what you're seeing there, because it's right. amazing. Well, in our hospital, it's a newborn and infant critical care unit, so we actually get babies from all over the country who have such complex medical cases that they need a higher level of care. I mean, we know that when we're under stress, we know the first three years of life are really important for development. The brain is the most malleable then. It can build new connections, and by implementing an early intervention technique like mm -hmm. this, we can actually help increase the positive developmental trajectory for infants. You have a story about a guy who, you know, if, if people walking down through Skid Row see him, he's damaged, he's fragile, mm -hmm. he's weird. Um, mm -hmm. Nathaniel Ayers, sure. tell us the story about how you got your connection with him and how music really kind of changed his well-being in Certainly. a way. Um, I met Mr. Ayers, Nathaniel Ayers, through Steve Lopez, the columnist and author who wrote The Soloist that became the subsequent film. And um, Nathaniel is diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and refuses treatment. Uh, and as a result, uh, the, the explosions he has are terrifying. Yet what, when he was exploding, he was exploding with a violin in his hand. And it was at a, in a practice room backstage at Disney Hall, and all I could do at that moment was make music. Um, and you know, just going back to trauma and brain injury, we now see that music, through music therapy and the new research that's going on through fMRI studies, has a tremendous role to play in the regeneration of veterans who have experienced massive brain trauma, or, for example, um, 
stroke victims who are aphasic, who can no longer string along a sentence, but we see in studies that they can actually sing the words right. and pronounce the words perfectly yeah. while singing. Um, and it really is a kind of miracle of what's happening in the brain. And for Nathaniel and my relationship, music became our common ground. Mm. And music became really that language through which we could share experience and then begin to build a foundation of a relationship. And um, inspired by Nathaniel, I started bringing music to more people like him in clinics and shelters and now in jails. Wow. On, on Skid Row, and most recently we played at, um, we did our 41st concert at the Twin Towers Jail, um, playing for the mental health ward there, mm. and had just the most, not just sort of exciting result of yes. connecting with our audience members, right. but really um, connecting with these beautiful human beings and making, yes. making something heard. And Alexandra, let me talk to you about the connection that both of you share in a sense that when you think about infants they can't communicate with you mm -hmm. and yet when you find somebody who's schizophrenic they have a mm -hmm. difficulty communicating to mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and there there is this connection that you're communicating through the music and they're responding yes. uh, it must be terrific to see it is it is it really transcends illness mm -hmm. it transcends language barriers and it connects people on almost a visceral level mm -hmm. you know we have rhythm within us everyone loves to say I can't you know I don't have rhythm or I can't sing but we all do the music inside of us, our heartbeat, we all connect through rhythm, through music, like you said, mm -hmm. a soul connection in a sense. And so when it's used as a healing tool, used to transcend those difficulties, it's just incredibly powerful. Yeah. And there was a, there was a, a recent study in Nature Neuroscience mm -hmm. that talks about the effect of music on our dopamine response. And oh, that, yes. that chill you get down your spine when the hair is on your neck yes. stand up are directly linked to the kind of music that you love the most. And mm -hmm. so now we're beginning to understand that there might even be a modality for music to play a role in you know psychiatric illness mm -hmm. you know we see effects in things like Parkinson's disease yes. where there are dopamine you know imbalances and maybe the same thing can happen in schizophrenia and We're you've even mentioned that Alzheimer's right. uh, that, that you can see absolutely yes yeah. it's really true I mean I, I've worked in Alzheimer's units and mm -hmm. in my my experience thus far and people who can't even speak to their family members. When they're in a music therapy group engaging, they remember every single word yeah. from a song from, usually it's the early 20s, the music that we remember later in our life. So wow. it's really phenomenal. Unreal. It's really phenomenal what music can it's do. It's fascinating to me, but does it seem like it took us a while to get to where we are now? I mean, it's, it's you know, like you're, you're witnessing someone playing the guitar in a hospital yes. and you're watching these charts and you can see the impact it's having on kids, but, but, but why did it take medicine so long to embrace music. It seems like they should go together. It's an interesting question. You know, yeah. in, in, in a way, the very beginning of the asylums, when the asylums were, were started by the Quakers, there were music troops and yes. theater troops that always performed in these spaces. And they were of such high quality that the whole community would come right. to the asylum and watch. It's brought us back to this core question of what it is, why it is that we make music and what it is we're capable of doing through music that we have access to a language that is common to all of us and is a tool that can be used for healing or mm -hmm. a tool that can be used to start conversations, um, conversations that really need to happen. Can you pick up the tool and demonstrate <laughs> for us and tell us, give us a little bit of background about the, the, the piece that you're going to perform Certainly. for us. Certainly. I, I, I'd love to play a Saraband by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's uh, from his Partita in D minor. He wrote this piece, this series of pieces, just as his wife passed away very suddenly. And so he was grief stricken. He was in a new town. And for me, um, we have this image of Bach that is very powerful and stentorian and this man who is in control of his life. But in fact, I feel that Bach was able to be so vulnerable through this tiny four-stringed instrument. And uh, this is a piece about vulnerability. Terrific.
Mm. Incredible. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Uh, and Alexander, pleasure yeah. having both Thank of you, you so on. Much. Full frame. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Next, a look at another alternative therapy that is harnessing the power of the connection humans have with animals of all kinds.